What, what needs to happen to the economy for prices to fall back down at least 50%? Well, I, I think we have, we'll have a hard time seeing that again. Like people lost trust in general. That's why we are at 1850 gold and we've seen a rebound off the recent, recent dip as well. So if you bought the dip, congrats on that. Uh, that means you don't believe in what's happening in general in the world right now. So you are contrarian to most what other people are doing. But what needs to happen is like we need, pretty much need to see unicorns walking in the street. For, for, for the world financial system sort of change, right? The word of the big reset, like I'm not a conspiracy theorist or so, but that's been thrown around here quite often in the financial system. Money printing is getting out of control. Mm -hmm. um, people are having a hard time generating value for themselves, right? And I'm, I'm the best example as well. I'm trying to look at houses in Germany right now. We bought a house, uh, it was in 2012, I believe, uh, for around 430,000 euros. Uh, I could sell my house right now for 800,000 euros, and that's only in eight years, more of a double. Uh, if I would be looking at something, it's just slightly bigger. I'd be looking at something at 1.5 billion dollars, uh, million euros. So like, don't tell me there's no in price inflation. I think that's just being nicely hidden in, in the markets. And yeah. I think the gold price is reflecting that hidden value, uh, inflation already. So. Yeah. I, okay, so that, that's an excellent point. I don't think we'll be seeing unicorns in the street, for your example, but I think what we could see is a retracement and a continuation of the 2011 trend. I'm not saying it will happen, but it could. It's a possibility because if you look at the price action between, I, I've shown this chart to a, to a, to another guest uh, not too long ago, the price action of 2019 to now has closely mirrored that of 2011, 2012. So we saw a peak in 2011 and then a fall down around the same magnitude as what we're seeing now. So it's not within you know, it, it, it is within the realm of possibility that it can retrace back down. Now, I don't know if it would go down to 2015 levels, but uh, what do you think? No, it, it can actually, because we went up fairly fast. For gold to move 50% in, in 18, 24 months is actually a big move for a precious metal. Right. So when we saw the silver squeeze last week as well, when we saw 8% movements in a day, that's extreme volatility in the precious metal space. Sure. So I'm not saying we're not going to see lower gold prices again. OK, I think that's just healthy right now. We're sort of in a bottoming phase, like there's a sideways trend, which is really healthy for the sector to sort of get adjusted to what is going on in the space. Investors to accumulate or sell their positions based on their feeling. And it, it just makes a lot of sense at this level. Yes, we, we, we can go lower. We tried to go lower. But so far, we've been always been bouncing off certain technical support levels. And let me say I'm not a technical analyst here, but it, it's been super supportive to see that. So I, I doubt that we're going to see a massive breakdown to the bottom. Yeah. Um, every analyst I've talked to on SF Live here sort of sees the same thing. Yes, there's a testing of the retracement levels and we'll get back, we'll fill some gaps. But in general, like we're still in an upward trend for gold. Uh, it's going to take a, a miracle, as I said, unicorns walk in the street to, to sort of probably break that to the massive downside and $1,200 gold. I don't see realistic based on the macroeconomic factors and mm -hmm. everything that is happening right now uh, in, the, in the markets. What's fundamentally different this time around than nine years ago? Because remember last time in 20, well, 2008, we had a recession and there was at the time, you know, a limit, well, not a limited, but record amounts of stimulus for that time. And then, you know, gold, re gold reflected that by climbing up to its 2011 highs. And we, 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 we had that this year, it was just truncated down to less than a year instead of three years. So I, I wonder I wonder if there's anything fundamentally different in our economy now. Not not really. We're still we're printing more money than ever. The the the, the US debt is just exploding. Right. Um, but I think people are getting more used. A, a people are not are, are more realistic. Let me say it that way. So we've been in a 10 year bull market for for the overall market. Right. So people are starting to look, okay, like 10 years, it's quite a long time. I've been making 20, 25% in the SP for 10 years every year. So they're starting to think like maybe I should actually re reallocate some capital and then maybe take some money off the table and put it in different sectors. Right. And uh, I've been saying that before. And I think I said that in an interview with your colleague, Michael McCray before we actually need something to happen that scares the overall market. Mm -hmm. And we've seen that a bit in March, where we've seen a massive dip where the S&P corrected 30%, I think. Yeah. Don't quote me on that exact number. But that was a nice scare. We need some of that 401k money to move into our sector to right. make it viable longer term and maybe reach that next level. Personally, I'm quite happy with 1850 right now. Sure. But uh, it, it, it is a bit dull right now, I have to admit. Um, and uh, what, what more challenge to the uh, bull thesis for gold? I know that many people... Um, including the guests I've interviewed, think that gold is a good inflation hedge. And, uh, you know, definitionally, that's true. But if you just take a look at pockets of history where that didn't hold up, for example, the last nine years, where gold flatlined around the 2015 lows, 
you know, it, it just seems to me that a good inflation hedge should at least be something that climbs steadily year after year, let's say on a compound annual growth rate of 2-3% to beat inflation, but gold just hasn't done that in the last decade. Can you comment on why it hasn't done that and whether or not you feel, still think that gold is a good inflation hedge? I, th I think you should ask the, the, the people in Turkey, the people in Russia and Venezuela, how gold is evaluated, like an inflation hedge, right? Like you don't buy it for for getting your compound annual growth of four, two, three percent. Sure. It doesn't matter if it's down 10 percent because when inflation really hits and so far the numbers don't suggest where there's massive inflation, although it's like if you just look at the housing market. You know, I think there is massive inflation happening mm -hmm. that's trickling down into all other sectors. Um, I think that's nicely disguised. But if, if you if you ask those guys like in the Russian ruble, the Turkish lira, and don't ask me, what the, I think the the, the, the Venezuelan salt, don't quote me on that one. <laughs> but they, they, they were happy that they were holding gold because they held their value and actually gold went up in those currencies. Right. And that's where we're going to see potentially again with the U.S. dollar. Um, I don't think it'll come that far, but I think it's a nice it's it's a nice hedge. Like okay. you're not supposed to make money with it. Yes, it's nice to see it go up, but you're not going to sell it, especially if you bought physical. If you buy the ETF product, you're buying it as a trade anyway. I understand. Yes. Yeah. So, so what you're okay. So the, the key point that you brought up there is gold is a hedge just depending on which currency you're hedging it against. That, that, that too. Yes. The US dollar right now seems to be doing fine. And I'm sure there are other countries that want to hedge or attach their currency to the US dollar. So I don't think the US dollar will lose its dominance as a world currency per se, right. but there might be some nice shifts in, in, in that stability. And if inflation does really pick up or if interest rates actually go negative, that's when you want to own gold. Do you remember what the industry with the mining industry was doing around, you know, circa 2014 to 2016 when gold was at its decade lows? Did they adjust their costs accordingly? Did they just lower production? Most mi miners have spoken to the, the mid tiers to seniors have a non sustaining cost of around eight hundred with one thousand dollars. So I, I'd imagine that close to that level will be difficult for them. Uh, it will be difficult to maintain at this level because I've been talking to company CEOs as well right now, and, and costs for drilling, for example, are going up right now. They're ten, fifteen percent. There's a shortage of drills, assay times at the lab. It, it all costs more money now. So I'm sure at one point we'll see a slight in increase in. Gold or in gold production costs as well. That's inflation as well, by the way. It's not an official number, right? It's not something that the government publishes, but that's inflation to a degree as well. And we, we're not going to return to the, the lows and lows. Back in the day, the companies cut every single dollar out of their budget that they didn't need. Unfortunately, they also cut exploration. And uh, I think we'll see that coming back. And depending on how the companies report, we'll probably see some more brownfield exploration in those all-in sustaining costs because it's a sustaining capital if you, if you invest. So... Um, that that makes that, that we'll see that probably come back in the numbers. Okay, great. Let's talk about silver now because a lot of interesting news happening in the silver market. Well, it already happened. I'm looking at the uh, COMEX futures today. The uh, volume has already died down back to January levels. So I think there's uh, I think the short squeeze is over for now. But last week, as you saw it, how what was going through on through your mind as somebody who analyzes the mining sector? How do you think the mining sector was responding? It, it was really interesting because I'm really active on Twitter as well. And on Thursday, I did an interview with a colleague, with a, another analyst in this space. And we were, and I was asking, like, are we mesochistic? Like, what are we doing in this sector? Like, it's so dull right now. Nothing going on. That was Thursday morning. Thursday afternoon, I was sitting in my chair clapping like a little girl. I'm um, quite excited about the silver squeeze and all the attention the silver sector was getting at the time. Um, yes, it has died down. Right. It, it was a, a storm in a, in a water glass, but I'm actually quite excited what kind of attention it brought to the sector. A couple of companies were able to raise money off the back of that, which is good for them. They were opportunistic. They got rewarded. But I hope that a couple of funds and fund managers and investors stick around and see actually there's real value. There are not too many silver companies, not too many good ones. And then maybe it trickles also down to the gold space. But uh, unfortunately, gold and, and gold is still out of favor, although we're producing probably a record free cash flow this quarter um, like we've never seen before and I'm just waiting for the major miners to come up with their financials they are they already put out their production numbers but financials should be really interesting for Q4 2020 yeah. and people will see that they're producing more cash flow than the tech companies and uh, that that should actually wake some people up but right now valuations and that stuff doesn't matter. well I'm just going to stop you right there I don't think tech investors really care about cash flow I don't think that's <laughs> I, I no know that's comparing and apples and to apples right now yeah and valuations don't are not really of interest right now as well. So right. stocks only know one way and that's up and PE ratios are pretty irrelevant in the main markets right now, it seems. I, I yeah, you're you're absolutely right. The S P five hundred PE ratio is uh very high, close to twenty seventeen levels. Now I want to uh I want to um sorry, two thousand seven levels. I want to talk about valuations for gold and silver miners. I asked this question to David Earthley. 
and uh, who is uh, speaking on your program on your on your conference. And uh, this is the XAU to gold chart. The XAU is the uh, gold and silver index. It's a basket of miners. So compared to gold, the ratio is at lows close to 2016 levels. And I, I wonder why that is. Well, first of all, is this an opportunity for investors that valuations are relatively cheap right now? Or is this a risk, do you think? I think it's a huge opportunity. And I looked at the, the chart as well. And I've seen that in the early run up in 2019, for example, the gold companies actually outpaced the gold price. And right now we're pretty much in line with what gold is doing. There's in, in terms of activity also with the GDXJ. And uh, I think there's massive opportunity. And I just hinted at my last answer as well, like PE ratios, free cash flow percentages, like they're producing massive free cash. And the BMO came out with a study, I think I mentioned in our, our last conversation as well, that the, the top 10 gold miners will be producing over $90 billion in free cash flow until the end of 2024. That's a lot of free cash flow well, that why needs you, to be reallocated. Why do you think investors aren't... I guess that's, I'm generalizing here, but according to the valuations, it seems to me that investors aren't picking up on these positive attributes that you're saying. Is that just an issue of marketing? What, what's going on? Uh, to, to a degree, like in, uh, we're still doing a poor job at communicating that mining is actually essential to all life, pretty much, right? If it's not grown, it's mine. This conversation would not happen without mining. Um, but trying to get that across, it's not a sexy story. Mining is not sexy. Right. Like it doesn't come across well on Robinhood, TikTok or any of the other platforms that the main traders are on right now that, that we're chasing to a degree as well. It's, it's not sexy. Yes, you can put up a, a photo of a nice big yellow truck, but it doesn't really interest. Valuations are nice. So smart money is reallocating. Yet we, we see, we've seen some inflows earlier this year into the sector coming in because there is good money to be made, I believe, this year. In, in the sector based on valuations, but everybody else is still chasing the 10, 20, 25% in the main markets. It's too easy to make that money as long as cash is flowing into those main markets. Well, maybe that's an opportunity to get in then. You don't want to be buying something when it's considered sexy, so to speak, when everybody is talking about it, right? Exactly. That's when you want to be selling it. And uh, once Robinhood starts catching on or any of the other free brokerage platforms, then maybe it's time to, to exit. So I hope people actually sold some stock while this silver price was running up to 30 I, I think it's also an issue of not understanding companies, the mining companies thoroughly. Very few people that I know personally, actually nobody that I know personally is a geologist. They don't understand the technical reports and data. People can't, you know, speaking of the junior miners, they can't, they can't decipher between a good deposit and a bad one. So there's a lot of, there's a lot of um, misunderstanding there, lack of information for the general public. When you're Talking about a tech stock like Facebook, maybe you don't understand financials, but you understand the product at least. Everybody uses Facebook. So there's a little more familiarity. That, that, that's a very good point. And I, I like comparing mining also to biotech, right? It's, it's very similar. You go through different phases in biotech. You go through different studies in mining. But it seems like people understand biotech just slightly better, right? And uh, as you said, it doesn't have that familiarity. Well, what needs to happen for people to become more familiar with uh, with the mining sector? Is it just trade shows? Is it conferences like SOAR? Is it, what needs to happen? I think we need big transactions. And uh, it seems like we're on the right path right now. Our market is starved for M&A transactions. Yeah. And um, we, we need more dividends. Dividends is one thing for just for generalist capital. You need to get on par with the big, big, uh, big companies in the S&P, 5% dividend yield, just to get that generalist investor, that 401k money interested. Um, but M and A transaction of scale and size, you need to build something that makes sense that attracts opportunity. Barrick merging with Newmont, for example, yes, they moved, their, they merged their office, uh, their their Nevada operations. But you need a blockbuster deal. Maybe BHP buying Barrick. I don't know. I'm just throwing names out there. Mm -hmm. But you need something of a, a blockbuster move in the sector uh, to make sense. Well, we've seen two of those, right? Barrick, Goldcorp. Can we see more on the on the mega merger front? Uh, don't underestimate. Left. Yeah, no, exactly. There are not too many left, but don't underestimate COVID as well. Travel has been hindered in terms of M and A transactions. As I said, we are producing lots of free cash flow. At one point, investors will demand growth, and right now, because of the lack of exploration, there is no growth in the major miners organically, and they will have to buy companies. So, yeah. at one point, that we'll see, we'll see that trickling through. Okay. Final message for investors who may be um, a little feeling a little bit defeated with their gold investments right now. 
don't be defeated. Like we're on the right path. Like you see the the buy the dip opportunities. You see gold being attacked to 1776 and we bounce back to 1840 this morning or 1835 right now. Um, there is opportunity. The market is very resilient. I, I think the general audience in the gold space doesn't believe what is going on in the main markets anymore. So okay. stay optimistic. Keep 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 holding, hodling, as the Bitcoiners say, and yeah. uh, stay in the sector. Like you're going to be rewarded at some point. All right. Well, thank you very much, Kai. They were rewarded last year, or well, the whole sector was, and uh, I think people are just hoping for that to come back again. And, I think that uh, was just the start. So I think we're on the right track. 1850 gold. It we'll we'll see it. 1850 is uh, okay. So I mean, what what's your what's your outlook in terms of price for the next couple of years? Do you think do you have one? Not really. I'm really happy with 1850 gold. Let the companies produce free cash flow at these levels. Okay. And as I said, the $90 billion number was actually from the 1850 level. Right. I, I don't need 2100. Let, let the market settle in. Let them understand, okay, there's money to be made and then we can move higher. No, here, here's a question. I, I said that was a final question. That's, I keep, I always do that. And then I have another one because you keep saying good things that I have to follow up on. So it, uh, a lot of my friends now have a little more money to invest and they keep asking me, you know, should I buy gold? Should I buy gold? And I can't say, you know, watch Kai Hoffman, watch the guests on my show, but they'll, they'll give you an answer. But here, here's something that I'm wondering if I had, let's say $5,000 to buy either gold or a gold miner, you know, what, 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 what would you choose and why? Question back, like what's, what's your goal? Is it securing your money or is it actually making money? I know right? it's so if you want to make it's, money, it's, you buy the miners. Yeah, There's okay. just more leverage. There's just the leverage, right? If you just want to keep the $5,000 and be happy with it and not lose it next week when, go, when the US dollar explodes for some reason, then, uh, buy the physical, right? Okay. So, 